With this lesson, I'd like to show you how you can apply effects to editable text here in Adobe Muse. I'm currently in plan mode and I'm viewing the Metro Cafe Project File 3, which is available to you in your Project Files folder in the Web Page Contents folder. And what I'd like to do is open up the A Master page here from Plan Mode. I'm going to go ahead and hover over that thumbnail in Plan Mode, double click it to open it up inside of Design Mode, and I'm going to focus on this header text up here where it says Chicago's. All right, if I click on it with the selection tool, that allows me to select the text frame that contains the text, and now we can apply some effects to it. You can access the effects up here in the control bar up at the top of the screen where it says effects. If you click that word, it's also a button that expands the drop down dialog box. And we have three different types of effects we can apply. We have a shadow. And in order to turn on the shadow effect, we have to put a check mark in the on box up at the top. And then we have some default settings here. It's using black as the color. We have a 50% opacity, a blur amount of eight, 45 degree angle and a distance of eight. Okay, now this looks pretty good. I actually kind of like these settings right off the bat, but if you want to make adjustments to them, you can click the up down arrows, maybe bring the shadow in a little bit closer, maybe bring the blur back a little bit so it's not quite as soft. We can increase the opacity so that it's more visible. We could even change its color by clicking the down facing arrow and choosing a different color swatch, maybe a blue shadow or we can go with a gold or even a white, something like that, okay? That's how you can choose options for shadow. I'm gonna turn those off for the time being and move on to bevel. We can apply a bevel to editable text as well. Clicking the on option again at the top. And now because this is script text and it's kind of thin, the bevel looks kind of funny when we're using these default settings. You can try and change them up a little bit, maybe lower the distance, maybe increase the opacity, lower the blur inside, something like that. All right, that's looking pretty good. That's a little bit better anyway. You can turn off the bevel, go into the glow, again, clicking on. Now notice that unlike shadow, this is applying the glow effect around all of the text. All right, so there's no angle feature. All right, around the entire contour. All right, it's defaulting to white. The opacity is 50%. If you want to increase or decrease that, you can by dragging the slider up and down. You can also enter a value in any of these fields. Let's say I want this at 67% or something. Press return or enter. That applies that value to the opacity. You can also increase or decrease the blur value. The more you increase the blur value, the softer the shadow is going or the glow is going to appear. Okay, same with shadows actually too. And then as we go to lower values, the harder the blur or shadow is going to appear, the glow or shadow is going to appear. Something like that. Okay, we also have an inner glow effect. If you, if you check that, then the glow effect is going to appear inside the characters of the letters. All right, so that make thing, makes things a lot different. We can decrease the blur value maybe get something, again, this is really thin text, so I don't know that an inner glow is gonna work very well with this particular type of font. Probably better off to stick with an outer glow, like so. All right, you can also uh, use these in conjunction with each other. They don't have to be separate. You can use them all if you want. <laughs> something like that. I wouldn't go that crazy with it. My one bit of advice to you when you're applying any kind of effects, whether it's to editable text or, or graphics, is to use tastefully. You know, don't overdo it because it's, it's real easy to overdo it with these kinds of effects and they may look cool at first, but the more you add, kind of the more tacky it can sort of look. So I would use with discretion with these kinds of things, maybe not try to overdo it. I would say in this instance, I kind of like the shadow the best and I think that's just enough to maybe add a little extra flavor to this header here and add to our design. All right, when you're done choosing your options, you can click the effects button again to hide that dialog box and you've now applied an effect. Okay, so what we learned in this lesson is that you can apply effects 
two editable text objects inside of Muse. All, right, all you need to do is select the text item with the selection tool and then up in your control bar access the effects dialog box and then turn on the different effects that you want to apply to the text. Keep in mind that even after the effect has been applied to the text, you can still edit this text with the type tool. You can select it, you can make changes to it, change kerning, change size, etc.